Hello everyone and welcome to this Ethical City Moonshop webinar. I hope that you and your families are all well uh, during these difficult times in our lives. My name is Jakob Bangskat, I'm the CEO of Ertico and I'm going to be your moderator for the next hour. We are very excited to launch this discussion today about the future of urban mobility and we uh, have more than 100 registered participants coming from Europe, Africa, Asia, US, all the way from UAE, Tatarstan, Uzbekistan, and both Ertico partners and some not yet Ertico partners. And it's both coming from the public and the private sector. And we have representatives also from the European Commission. So your speakers today, will be Alexandra May, my colleague from Ertico, who is coordinator and Ertico point of contact for this activity. We have Marshall Poulton, he's head of transport strategy at the Glasgow City Council, and Martin Söller, he's a project manager for innovation at the Berlin Agency for Electromobility. I've been uh, uh, allowed to give a short update also from, from the Ertico site before we kick off with the presentations. And um, you are probably all, as we are, asking yourself, what is the new normal after all this? How will the, the mobility sector be challenged? And will we have some benefits coming out of the changes happening uh, in the coming years? I have personally been talking for for the last years about the disruption of the mobility sector, what we are, the, some of the big changes that are going to happen. But uh, I must admit that I was not at all taking into account uh, the current situation uh, in my calculations. So we will see a lot of changes happening and especially in the urban mobility sector. Um, I read that uh, the deputy mayor of Paris, uh, Jean-Louis Misica, he said recently that uh, their secret dream is that the temporary becomes permanent. And uh, I hope there that he is mainly talking about the mobility and not about the fact that we are at the moment doing homeschooling and cutting our own hair. Um, but for sure, there are some, some things that have changed that people have realized that uh, these changes might be permanent for the future. And, we are seeing uh, different things happening in the urban mobility sector at the moment. Within Urchico, what we have been doing in the last couple of months during the lockdown is that we have been working closely with our partners to get them uh, to the post-COVID uh, uh, period that is hopefully coming soon. Um, we are organizing online services like this webinar, virtual events, online training, and we are also continuing to work closely with the startup community. We are looking into the funding opportunities for that, that can give funding injection into the, the mobility system coming from the Green Deal, the Horizon Europe, the CCM platform, et cetera. And then urban mobility planning is on top of our priority. It, it was before we were locked down, but it is also during and after. So traveling, of course, uh, for our events has been uh, impacted heavily for during this period. And we have also been forced to postpone some of our big congresses, the ITS Congress this month in Lisbon uh, that was uh, planned and also the planned event in September in Kazan, Tatarstan. So those two events have been delayed and uh, we hope to get up to full speed also on the ITS Congress side as soon as possible so we can meet uh, the whole community together. So now we are uh, looking into the City Moonshot survey. It's a global survey with a series of interviews where we are consulting 300 cities worldwide about their smart mobility challenges, their needs and their trends. And uh, we are trying to get uh, insight and up-to-date understanding about the needs of the cities and the mobility challenges, the solutions that they're looking for. We are doing this because we are answering a call from the Ertico partnership, uh, both from the public authority side and from the industry side, to see a faster take up of smart mobility solutions. 
So city engagement is a top priority for, for Ergico and our 120 partners. Uh, and our public-private partnership is really pushing forward for the latest innovation on, on mobility solutions that, that can offer new benefits for the cities. The results of, of all this will be presented to you at the ITS World Congress in Hamburg in October next year. Um, but until then, we will see a lot of activities happening. We will be engaging with cities uh, throughout a number of, of different actions that we are launching through interviews, online training, webinars, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Then that leads me straight to the program of today. And uh, here, Alexander, my colleague, will give you an overview on our mission and vision for the city moonshot study uh, moonshot study and uh, why we decided to to set up this then uh, martin and marshall uh, they were both in, involved in uh, creating the questions for for the study at a very early state stage and they will in their pre presentations they will focus on why this the topics were selected and what they see from their cities uh, the impact on uh, the future and how we can uh, how we can accelerate the development of smart mobility solutions if you want to raise any questions during uh, this uh, next coming hour then uh, please write your questions in the question box and i will post the questions to the presenters after each of the presentations. And at the end, we will also have the opportunity to have a Q&A session. Then I have to inform you that this session is being recorded. And this is in order for those who couldn't join today that they can view this at a later stage. And with this, I would like to welcome you, Alexandra. The floor is yours for your presentation. Thank you very much, Echo. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's a pleasure to, to be here today and to present to you the Ertico City Moonshot on behalf of, uh, of our Ertico team. And as Jakob already, already mentioned in his introduction, the Ertico City Moonshot was an idea and also a request from the Ertico Partnership both the public um, authorities and, and the private side. And this really uh, is our horizontal activity, which involved the whole partnership, as well as the whole Ertico team, um, because really uh, teamwork makes the dream work. So um, I would like to make this point before I start introducing the, the city moonshot. I'm going to tell you today all about it. I'm going to tell you uh, about how are we going to do this and why are we doing this? Um, what is our plan for the coming months? And most importantly, how can you contribute and how can you um, also become part of it in one of the 300 cities? So our mission is um, to engage with 300 cities. And you may wonder where is the number of 300 coming from? And actually, we've decided that 100 was just not challenging enough. And if we want to make a real impact, which is our goal of the city moonshot, we really have to uh, go for this highly ambitious goal. Therefore, we are going to speak to 300 cities all around the world. We are going to engage with them and we are going to um, we are going to ask about the needs, the challenges and uh, the plans when it comes to transport and mobility. And for the 300 cities, we are going to speak to 200 cities in Europe. What is really important is that we want to speak to all the capital cities in Europe, not only in the EU, but in Europe in general. Uh, we would love to speak to uh, cities in China, in Southeast Asia, in Northern America, South America, Africa, Australia, and any cities that would like to become part of this global initiative and uh, tell us their, their story and contribute to making a real impact together. And our mission is really um, clear and simple. We want to engage with cities through a series of insightful interviews. 
uh, where we are going to um, aim to gain in-depth understanding, again, as I said, about the needs, about the challenges and about the plans when it comes to mobility and transport. And if that was not enough, we are going then to put all the results together uh, in a report, which will be made publicly available for uh, anyone interested to benefit from the result and to fit them into our work um, into our work globally to together make our cities the best places possible to live. Um, so while engaging, engagement is really here our main objective and I cannot stress this enough. We really aim to inspire um, and also to learn from the cities we are going to interview. We're going to have 300 interviews with every city we are going to sit down together, um, most likely in a um, in a digital way and really listen and learn and share the benefits and uh, possible solutions uh, coming from intelligent um, intelligent mobility. And essentially, we really hope that through this, we can empower our cities and all of us citizens uh, and benefit from, benefit from this together. Uh, I think what is really important to mention at the beginning is what is going to be the content of the survey because we actually know that it's a very um we know that it's a very uh, ambitious goal of wanting to speak to 300 cities and maybe i'll just give you still a quick background of um of how are we going to engage with such a big number in fact when we sat down first and we've decided that we're going to we're going to do this we thought to ourselves, okay, so how, how many cities are we working with right now in this very moment? And then we've looked into the cities that were either in our article partnership or we worked with them through projects, through uh, platforms, through ITS congresses or article academy. And in that very moment, that was almost 70 cities that we just worked with then up to date uh, on that very date. And from then, we have actually managed to um, just by sharing the idea and having so much endorsement from, from the cities we were talking to, we have managed to achieve this amazing multiplier effect. And at this very moment, we have around 200 cities that, um, that are interested to, to participate in an interview, and this number really rises. And also, we managed to gain so much support from cities, thanks to the amazing uh, support from our article partners, um, such as, for instance, Swarco supporting us a lot in uh, promoting this initiative uh, and bringing it um, to city. So this is really, um, again, a, a big team work and activity. And where am I coming um, to with this comment is that for the topics that we chose for this very survey, um, that it was, again, a decision coming directly from uh, maybe not a decision, a request coming directly from cities who've been coming to us for uh, with different requests to have more open discussion, to have more exchange possibilities, to have more um, cities to cities uh, exchange as well as cities to mobility industry discussion when it comes to, to when it comes to these topics. And of course, data sharing um, is one of them that really needs a lot of um, a lot of uh, exchange of best practices, of um, of, uh, of of guidance, of how can we do this best to our so it suits our needs. Mobility as a service also is very was very high on um, on on this list of interest, as well of course as air quality and sustainability, which are essential to the well-being of uh, of our cities. Uh, and essentially um, our own lives. So this is this is the very first survey we are um, we are conducting. This is certainly not the last one, but for this one we really wanted to focus on these three topics um, to look in depth into how can we best answer questions uh, of the cities. So while developing the survey, uh, we worked with a number of uh, fantastic cities who supported. Um, who supported us in, in drafting the questions and they really came from the real life needs. So when we were discussing, for instance, data sharing, they really said, I, I would love to know how other cities make sure, um, how do they assure their quality of data? I, I would really like to know this. And 
loads of different questions like that which really came from the cities telling us what they would like to know from 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 others so this is extremely representative survey of of the needs of cities as well as we've had a lot of amazing feedback from Ertico partners who um, who provided their expertise and uh, contribution, um, making sure that we uh, also involve all the most important aspects of uh, intelligent mobility in this in this survey. And by saying survey, I I actually prefer to use the word interviews because how are we going to engage with cities? is in the most conventional human way, which is a discussion. So um, exchange of um, speaking and listening. And how are we going to do this um, in practice? So face-to-face, -face, of course, as soon as the situation allows us again to gather in the same room. And otherwise, um, not, uh, through web calls. So um, just arranging interviews with you whenever, whenever time is suitable for you and having this really good discussion with a couple of our Ertico colleagues who will be there to first of all learn from you, but also to share our expertise, to share our knowledge and to um, eventually together um, put together all the learnings into this report, which can give us a really really good result and the interviews the the interview will be in the format of a survey with a, a number of questions there are multiple choice there are open-ended questions and what is the most important is that really this interviews they focus on this open discussion format so it's not only ticking the boxes it's not only yes or no it's really if we say if it's a yes or no question we might want to ask you why yes or why no to really get more in the understanding of, of um, what are what are these needs and how can we how can we support each other best to um, to bring the best solutions the best investments into our cities which really suit our needs so this is this is in a nutshell the very format of it and how are we going to um, how are we going to do it so you're probably wondering Okay, so 300 cities, you know, it's quite easy to say, but how are you actually going to achieve it? What is your timeline? Um, and while doing all these interviews, you know, will we hear anything about what is happening and when, when can we expect um, some, some tangible results? So um, luckily I have some of those answers for you, hopefully most of them. And as we have just launched the City Moonshot last Tuesday, today is today is the second part of the launch, uh, which we are extremely excited about. And the interviews are officially started. We have already uh, a number of interviews scheduled in the pipeline, which is really exciting. Um, and we have set um, for this, as Jakob mentioned in his introduction, a timeline of um, looking towards the ITS World Congress in Hamburg, which will be taking place next year in October. By then, we are planning to have interviews, to have interviewed 300 cities. And at the Congress, we would like to publish the final results as well as have the, the final report ready. But in the meantime, given that it's almost 18 months, I think, leaning towards, towards next year, we are not planning to just stay silent and not not keep you posted um, quite the opposite we have um, thought that it could be a great idea to actually already announce and share with you the intermediate result that we will be getting from the interviews as we carry them out so for instance every 50 interviews especially when we find some really interesting learnings from either certain regions or one of the areas we will definitely be sharing this with you, and uh, you can you can be um, assured that if you're an Ertica partner or if you're one of the cities who uh, already participated in the interview or you are signed up to participate in the interview, you will certainly be in the loop and you will certainly be informed by our fantastic communications colleagues who um, who will reach out with all the information um, about the upcoming uh, whether it's going to be webinars or whether it's going to be um, other format of, of presenting this result, you'll certainly be important. And as we go um, towards next year, we'll also have a lot of 
different engagement activities, um, which I'm going to tell you more about in a moment. So for the cities who will participate in, in the city one shot, we, as I mentioned in my previous slides, the engagement is really the most important part of it. So we are treating the survey really as a tool to engage, which will give us incredible tangible results, which then we can use to feed into our work. But at the same time, we want to make sure that this, there is much engagement beyond the interview time. Therefore, we would like to um, invite you and um, encourage you to uh, <clears throat> make use of these activities, which uh, we, we are going to uh, which we're going to propose to you. Uh, for every city taking taking part in the in the interview, we are certainly going to um, have you visible in the final report. Uh, we can all learn together with Urtico Academy, which uh, offers a lot of excellent opportunities, um, such as, for instance, the webinars which we host now every week, this very one being one of them. Of course, best practices from cities, because one of the most uh, important parts uh, here of the city moonshot is to develop this twofold dialogue. So this dialogue between cities to cities, but also cities to mobility industry. So this is extremely important that we have these best practices exchange. We hear from many cities that, especially when it comes to, um, for instance, mass, we have the front runner cities, we have the cities that are just looking now into developing maybe their mass and they would just love to learn from one, one another, be able to talk to a city which maybe has similar challenges or needs and simply be able to ask, you know, how do you do this? How does it work for you? Um, same when it comes to data sharing. There are cities that are already very much in the front line and there are cities that are getting there but would love to also get some guidance or simply exchange the best practices. So this is something we are definitely going to put a lot of emphasis on. And with access to mobility experts, uh, absolutely with all our article partners, uh, we will be having together uh, different activities, different online trainings, for instance, on decarbonization of transport or, um, or mobility as a service. And certainly we will have specific angles to those coming also out from your interviews when we will identify um, topics which are very, very essential to you, maybe to have put in a training, then we'll have these exclusive online trainings uh, available to cities that participated in, in our um, interviews. And uh, they, will be, they will be hosting both, of course, public authorities um, and uh, cities from all over, all over the globe, as well as um, different, um, different article partners who, who would love to contribute to the topic. So this will be a really good possibility for exchange. And you will be welcome to be both uh, participate as a speaker as well as, as participate as, a, as an audience. And that will be both uh, different types of webinars as well as online trainings. Um, and of course, networking, we are going to look into how much can we um, can we provide matchmaking opportunities for you depending on 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 the need on whether you would like to speak to another city or whether you would like to get um, some guidance and support from uh, maybe an industry partner uh, depending on this we are in the best position to make this available for you and of course one of the biggest advan advantages of this is joining the broader ITS community and developing and benefiting from um, from everything that ITS has to offer for our amazing cities. And if I can put this into, um, into a little summary, I would just really like you to think about it as a global initiative that we can all only benefit from. And it really brings together, um, brings together the experts and brings together uh, our cities where we can learn from one another. And above all, we can make real impact and we can really uh, make our cities the place we, we want them to be in terms of transport and mobility, make our lives um, easier, make our, uh, make, make our cities smarter, um, more sustainable, and above all, safe. And in order to achieve this, we really need to have this in-depth understanding. We really need to know what do cities need and then bring the right solutions and bring the right investments to the cities. So this is um, this is 
is very, 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 very important part of what we are aiming for. Um, and this this has to be in place first before we can uh, before we can accomplish uh, anything else. And of course, cooperation. Cooperation here. So there's the twofold dialogue I mentioned to you before: the cities, the industry, the stakeholders, the institutions, everyone working together. That's really the key to success. So the city of Montreal is. Um, it's again a platform where we can bring all this uh, all this together to uh, essentially through a very strong engagement through um, taking the time to to listen to one another and to look into this uh, with um, with with attention to detail we can really uh, all benefit uh, in a in a collective way and um, I really hope that you see the see the value in the city moonshot i hope that you will be interested to um we really hope that you will be interested to to join us for for these interviews um if i can mention maybe a practicality is uh we are we are open for any cities that are interested in joining we are usually suggesting as for a profile um to join the interview we uh, we suggest heads of um, transport strategy or transport uh, planning, but you are absolutely welcome, for instance, to join the interview with two, three colleagues, depending on their expertise. So we are very adaptable and we are very open uh, just to uh, just to meet meet also your uh, expectations and your needs. And speaking of being very adaptable, I think looking at the current situation that we are in with uh with the COVID 19 we have also decided to uh, address a couple of questions in the sustainability section uh related to COVID. so we will also be having uh results interesting results on this topic from 300 cities um referring to implications of COVID 19 on on transport and mobility in our cities uh, if you found if you found this interesting uh, and if you would like to um, share it with your colleagues who you think might be interested, uh, please you can read our press release. I'm, I've attached the link to it. Um, you can also, uh, if if you're ready to join us, you can register for for an interview directly uh, on the website. We would love to hear from you. Or if you have any questions, um, if I've missed anything, or if you are certain simply curious about something please don't hesitate to to contact uh, us directly just on my email which is provided here um, and of course um, i'm open and ready for for all your questions and thank you so much for your attention thank you very much alexandra i have uh, received some some questions and some of them you already answered at the end but uh, <laughs> i <laughs> I will uh, just ask you a few questions from, from the list here. First mm -hmm. of all, um, are we mainly looking at the capital cities, major cities, or do we also uh, include small and medium-sized cities where a lot of uh, challenges and a lot of innovation is happening? Um, that's, I love this question. We are absolutely looking at um, a very good uh, variety of cities. So we want to ensure that we have fair geographical spread of cities. We want to ensure that we have um, that we have diversity of cities when it comes to their size, when it comes to um, their size and population. Um, so we are really um, open for any applications and any um any interest so absolutely uh we are going to take that into consideration of course in the methodology um but we have no constraints we're we're totally open for for all the applications okay then i also have a question here about uh, whether we have been in dialogue with spain um madrid and get any in input from them but i guess uh, uh, those who are in contact or who, those who are coming from Spain or Madrid uh, are able to contact you and, and to be part of, of the process? Absolutely. We've been actually in touch with Spain. Uh, we have not had an interview with Madrid yet. We work as Ertico with Madrid in, in a couple of activities and it's a brilliant cooperation. So uh, please just message me directly after after this um, 
um, and we can we can connect with with Madrid happily. Then I, I have a lot of questions. Uh, first of all, I would say we cannot go through all, all of them right now. Uh, but um, uh, you have you put your contact details, so uh, I think uh, people, they, the, the, those listening in, they should they should contact you for more details. If if I don't have the chance to to go through so their me, questions, please. there is one here on on the supply and neutrality. The those that we work with. Uh, I can start by saying that we are technology neutral in Utico and we work with all the sectors and, and we make sure that that we give a, a, a biased objective uh, uh, view to to this to towards the cities. But uh, are there anything can non ertico industry uh, partners, for instance, participate in in the further activities or or should they just sign up through Ertico? Uh, I think it's also a really good question. And um, in the survey per se, maybe to address it like this, the questions, the way the questions are structured, they're of course addressing technology, but we are technology neutral, as you say. So we ask, there are more technical questions, there are more strategy uh, focused questions, um, there are more um, maybe planning um, focused questions. But I would say if if anyone is interested uh, in, in what we are doing, we're absolutely open to, to have a discussion and see how we can cooperate. So uh, being an Ertico partner is definitely an, an advantage at this stage because you are able to participate in, in the process and development and you are automatically included in all the activities. But I think we're absolutely open for, um, for any ideas and cooperation. So we can definitely have a call. Okay. Um, I have also received some indications that it's a great initiative, uh, supporting the initiative. Um, and um, will there be different calls for each city, which I suppose there will be? Yes. So every every city means uh, a separate interview. So um, so we are of course having having this. Um, these separate calls with, with every city, yeah. <laughs> 300 cities, 300 calls. <laughs> okay, I I think uh, those who didn't get uh, their question answered, uh, please address directly Alexandra and uh, and she will answer to you directly. With pleasure. And then, thank you, Alexandra. Thank you I so will, much. I will now ask Marshall to make your webcam available and please let's hear it from Glasgow. Marshall, you're on mute. You're, you're muted. Is that better? Much better. Well, okay. Thank you, Akil. And good afternoon, everyone. First of all, let me say how delighted I am to be assisting the Ertico team in the implementation of the City Moonshot uh, initiative. I'm very confident that it will help give cities a toolbox of best practices and challenge them to accelerate their decarbonisation plans and help them meet strategic goals. So, turning to Glasgow in particular, over the last 10 years in Glasgow, um, we've been no different to any other European city. In other words, we've suffered from a congested road network, had environmental issues to contend with, such as carbon emissions, air quality challenges, and road safety collisions, especially with vulnerable road users. With a strong political will, we now have clear policy drivers in place to focus our minds on what we need to deliver over the next decade. These drivers are clean and green, tackling poverty, health and well-being, inclusive growth, and last but certainly no means least, people and place. With regard to clean and green, uh, Glasgow has made good progress in reducing carbon emissions in the city. The latest figures show that there has been a 37% decrease from the baseline. 
So Glasgow has continued to exceed its 30% target ahead of schedule for 2020. And these uh, percentages were taken from the 2018 figures. Glasgow City Council has declared a climate and ecological emergency in May last year and followed that with a report from a cross-party working group of elected members, which made 61 recommendations for addressing the emergency. Principal amongst these is a commitment for the city to achieve carbon neutrality by the year 2030, together with strong values on social justice and inclusive growth. Glasgow links to a wide range of other city peers through networks such as the Covenant of Mayors, Eurocities and the Global Resilient Cities Network. It has recently been admitted to the Carbon Neutral Cities Alliance. Having said all this, it is clear, however, that transport has made less progress than other sectors in contributing to these reductions and therefore has now become the principal source, source of carbon emissions by sector for both Glasgow and Scotland. Air quality has also been improving in Glasgow, but there remain hotspots where the Scottish and European Union limit objectives for nitrogen dioxide are being breached. The city has introduced Scotland's first low emission zone in the city centre, with air quality being a significant significant continuing source of global concern for urban policy makers and residents. The big challenge that we have in Glasgow is that it's traditionally had low levels of car ownership. Approximately 46% of households have to rely on public transport and active travel by necessity as they don't have access to, to a car. Issues of cost, accessibility and scheduling are therefore all the more significant for local residents, particularly in relation to bus services. The city's overarching community plan has re recognised this challenge and issues around the transport system also came out of the main response through a public consultation on the city's climate emergency work. Moving to tackling poverty, health and wellbeing, Getting around the city is easy for some, but challenging for others. For example, if you rely on public transport, your choice of job opportunities may be limited by travel time and cost, especially for people who live in neighbourhoods not well connected to the wider city. That could reinforce poverty or inequalities in different parts of the city. Or if you're less able or too old or young to move around easily on your own, you might not uh, be able to get out as often as you would like, whether for essentials, for exercise, or to see friends and family. And that can have a direct impact on the individual's health and well-being. So we want our city's transport system to help reduce poverty and deprivation and improve, uh, improve our health and well-being. Moving to inclusive growth. With grab to inclusive growth, we want our city's transport to drive and support inclusive growth across the city region. Poor access to economic opportunities and to healthy and fulfilling lives is not only detrimental for those individual people, it's also damaging for our communities and our economy. That's because it increases in inequality and means that our citizens are less happy, less healthy and less productive. Finally, moving on to people and, and places, and this is one of the, the things that's most important to, to Glasgow, is becoming a city of, of places. Roads and pavements are fundamental to how we move through the city. However, streets and pavements are not only for transport, they're also for public spaces. Places in every neighbourhood where people can engage with each other, whether just to say hello or play outside. We want our city's transport to help make every neighbourhood more livable, including the city centre. So, to deliver to these four outcomes, we're currently drafting three transport strategies. The first one is a connectivity plan, which is essentially uh, a local transport strategy. This will set out our strategic approach 
on how people and goods move into and around our city centre every day that will set out a number of strategic actions to ensure Glasgow's connectivity, accessibility, attractiveness, resilience and mobility all align with our strategic ambitions. The next strategy is our city centre transformation plan. This plan will complement the connectivity plan through creating a suite of actions which will transform Glasgow city centre and reinforce its role as one of the leading destinations in Europe for people to visit at the same time as creating a very pleasant environment for people to, to live. The transformation plan will radically transform the city centre and identify the challenges and opportunities we have to reduce pollution and congestion and to create high quality cycling infrastructure and pedestrian spaces such as those being delivered through our ambitious avenues program um, which ultimately improves the city centre experience while delivering on our sustainability and inclusive growth ob objectives. Finally, we have a Liberal Neighbourhoods Plan, um, which is quite new in its concept. Through our Liberal Neighbourhoods Plan, we want to transform the streets identified through meaningful public engagement <clears throat> into areas where people feel they are pleasant, safe, attractive environments, where noise and air pollution are tackled through measures to encourage active travel and public health. We'll measure our progress towards making sure our neighbourhoods are protective, comfortable and enjoyable. At the heart of the development of these three, three transport strategies will be data. It's essential that whatever project or initiative we will be delivering will have to be evidence-based and data-driven. It's for that reason we will be working with our partners, including academia, and the National Health Service to get a good understanding what data sets are available in order that we can blend the data to meet our desired outcomes in the way of better health, obesity reduction and asthma benefits, especially from particular matters, the PM10s, 5s and 2.5s. We will also be using the, the standards or traditional data sets that we've got on volumetric data at the traffic signal scoot loops, we've got mid cordon sites and we've got outer cordon uh, monitoring sites to monitor trends and, and patterns. This will be in addition to, to air quality sensors, journey time, reliability and also speeds. In addition, we've started early discussions uh, with mobile phone operators and we're in discussion with British Telecom to see if we can access mobile phone data. Mobility as a service is, is quite key to, to moving forward. Um, I would have to say that we're still in the early stages of getting an understanding what the business model is going to be, but we definitely want to um, target the first mile and last mile of, of journeys. Such initiatives would include uh, enhancing cycling, um, walking provision, uh, e-bikes, trialling e-scooters, looking at e-cargo facilities, on-demand shuttles, car sharing, ride sharing, city car club and travel um, integrated with, with business hubs. Now, um, that was all before COVID um, situation. So at the present time, the Scottish Government has made £10 million uh, available for local authorities to make bids to include temporary measures to allow social distancing in their cities and involves essentially reallocation of, of road space. It's all for cycling, walking, but above all, making spaces for people available um, and it will uh, facilitate safe pedestrian movement. So, um, in conclusion, these are the tools that we are using to deliver strategic goals, and I'm very happy to discuss these in more detail with questions just now or later on. Jakob, thank you very much. 
Thank you very much, Marshall. Uh, I have a couple of questions. Um, you mentioned air quality, you mentioned congestion. Um, accidents is also something that where, where we have seen a, a clear drop in the last couple of months, uh, road accidents. Um, do you uh, do you see an opportunity to 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 keep uh, this uh, a, a positive positive momentum in in the developments of some of those critical areas for you as a city in the in the coming period? You were talking about a, the action plan for the coming decade, and things are of course now changed has changed as you say. But are you, except for just giving funding, immediate funding, are you also seeing a change in the the urban mobility planning for after what has been experienced in the last couple of months? Not only concerning social distancing, but also in a way to maybe um, uh, accelerate the use of mobility as a service and um, and and change the the urban mobility planning. Yes, I think you're absolutely right, Jacob. It's um, some very good points there. Um, obviously, uh, we've got this global pandemic, uh, pandemic with um, with COVID-19. Nobody predicted anything like this would happen, and certainly never in my lifetime um, have I uh, witnessed and observed so much reduction in, in traffic and uh, moving out of public transport into other forms of, of mobility. Scotland at the present moment is still in, in full lockdown, um, albeit there's sometimes a silver lining in every cloud, and I think that's what you're alluding to. Can we take the opportunity to capture some of the benefits? In other words, in air quality, we've noticed streets at um, where we've got our monitors that uh, nitrogen dioxide levels are down by some 80%. Um, general traffic flows throughout the, the, the main radial routes is down by some 65%. That's general traffic. It has crept up in the last seven to 10 days. So we're back up to a reduction of about 55%. We don't know the reason for that. Um, I would suggest it's not necessarily just with people going back to work, but it's maybe more people using your car because bus services are, are less frequent. Um, congestion, well, it'll be interesting to see just what happens over the, the next couple of months. We are currently setting two timelines um, to look at uh, three months from the month of June and six months from the month of, of June to gauge what the, the amount of modal shift is going to be. Surveys have shown that in the UK, that something like 80% of people who travel to work will be uncomfortable going back onto to public transport. So that's a tall order, not just for the, um, the real operators and bus operators to contend with, but what does that mean with the amount of cars that are coming back onto the, the roads, especially with this initiative, we've, we've got to increase more cycling, increase more walking, and above all, the real reallocation of road space at um, shopping centres, not just in the city centre, but in out-of-town centres. Um, coming into the city on, on radio routes. The one um, aspect that you mentioned with regard to, to accidents, um, over the past five to ten years, certainly, we in Glasgow have got a good record of reducing the, the number of, of collisions, um, especially with regard to fatalities and seriously injured. Um, one of the downsides that was seen as a result of COVID is a significant increase in speed, and uh, the police are taking measures. We're getting good variable message signing out, out there, as well as um, publicity campaigns to let them know that, that speed limits are there to be observed. 
Unfortunately, we are running out of time. I have a, I have other interesting uh, questions for you, but we, we they will have to be addressed to you directly. So we will provide all participants with with your contact details so that they can contact you. Uh, there's a. Uh, uh, some who would like to know more about the plans for the COP26 in Glasgow and uh, whether you have initiatives on related to data monetizing in Glasgow and um, and and other questions that uh, they can ask you maybe directly because we are we are really <laughs> running out of time. So thank you very much. Yeah, Marcia. absolutely no problem. Yeah, I'm happy to. To answer the questions by by email, if you make my contact details available. Perfect. Thank you. And that leaves us with the last presentation from you, Martin. So now we go to Berlin. Yes. Good afternoon um, to all of you, and greetings from Berlin. Um, Can you make yeah. your web webcam available, please? Can you can you see my slides now? Your slides, yes. And also my voice, you can hear. Great. Right. So good afternoon from Berlin. Um, ah, now okay, now I should be visible. Is it correct? Perfect, thank you. Yeah. Ah. So of course, uh, what Marshall was uh, commenting, um, the COVID pandemic is uh, probably a huge setback and also great uh, or, or sad obstacle on our way to create a more sustainable mobility system but still we have put a lot of work in the last um, years here in berlin as well into this and I, I see it still as a promising situation to make the shift uh, towards a more sustainable mobility system and the goal is still the same we want to create an innovative sustainable and lasting its uh, for the benefit of all the citizens uh, needs here in berlin so um, how do we tackle the challenges and uh, what have we done in Berlin in the last couple of years? I just want to uh, briefly present this and also comment a little bit on what uh, the COVID pandemic uh, maybe um, has uh, well produced effects on, on, on our strategy and how we want to deal with it. Um, so how do we tackle the challenges? Um, 10 years ago, our agency for electromobility um, was founded um, as an agency, official agency of the state in Berlin. Um, and from the get-go, uh, the goal was clear uh, to create more um, economic power to support the companies here, to create startups and create added value around smart mobility. Um, so we are closely linked to the Senate Department for Economics. Um, of course, um, it is a win-win situation where when you create a new kind of uh, companies around smart mobility, also, um, uh, yeah, well, the sustainable mobility solutions will benefit and also um, the ecological, ecological situation will um, benefit from this. So um, what was created um, is a public-private partnership model from the beginning. Um, as you can see here on the symbols, we have uh, gathered uh, luckily around 70 partners uh, until today from uh, very known uh, companies um, uh, till um, uh, startups, uh, Berlin-based startups. We also uh, could manage or have managed to attract uh, companies to settle down towards Berlin. Um, so very proud of this uh, um, existing network and we're also very proud to be a member of Artico since a couple of years. And this is really the foundation of our uh, work and our activities, our network. Um, so really our um, um, our activities um, are here focusing on uh, three different aspects. One is the development of projects, uh, really to bring innovative um, activities um, um, to the mobility systems in Berlin. So we are, of course talk about uh, funded projects together with uh, with local partners, with European partners, um, we, we could talk about um, projects who really um, not only are um, technically and research orientated, but also bring new kind of innovation um, towards uh, sustainable business business models. Uh, we see ourselves as also a guidance 
uh, for all kind of stakeholders here in Berlin, and we also communicate about our activities, um, such as it's, it is today in this webinar. Um, we also have uh, close uh, linked uh, to a variety of uh, international partners, and this is also the reason why we see a huge benefit um, participating in this uh, Attico Moonshot uh, project. Um, so to give you a little bit um, uh, of a status quo, the situation in Berlin, I thought it might be interesting to uh, show you. Well, now is my. Can you see myself or my slides? I only see myself now. Okay. Uh, back to the slides. Um, I wanted to present to you the um, the current model split in Berlin. So as you can see, I'll just uh, quickly um, bring these different kinds of modes uh, into it. You can see what happened in the last couple of years. Uh, so the good news is that bike traffic uh, has been increased tremendously um, towards uh, almost 20% here in Berlin. Um, motorized individual traffic has been decreased, which is good news. Um, the usage of cars is, um, we are of course now talking pre, uh, the pre-COVID situation, um, uh, not very high in Berlin. Uh, and public transport is, um, well, it's quite uh, stable and um, uh, widely um, accessible. And I think we have a good uh, network of public transport here in Berlin. Uh, but this also brings me to the current situation. We probably uh, would see um, a real-time model split right now. Uh, the situation would be a little bit different. Um, on the silver lining, um, of course, the bike uh, usage has been increased. This is good news. Um, the motorized uh, individual traffic uh, also has been increased. That's a, that's a bad news uh, here. And um, I think uh, many people right now with the situation um, are avoiding uh, using the public transport. So this is really um, um, brings up the question how we go forward um, dealing with public transport, the safety aspect, the hygiene aspect, and all what comes with the current situation. Uh, would it be just, uh, you know, would it just be a short-term effect or would it have a long-term effect? In any case, I think we need to adapt the public transport uh, sector will need uh, adapt the services. Um, what I also wanted to present on um, the current strategy um, and what we um, have already um, in operation here in Berlin, um, talking about electric buses. Um, there are clear targets um, of procurement of up to 220 electric, 210, sorry, electric buses. Um, up until 2021, and we already have 60, uh, yeah, 60 electric buses um, in operation here in Berlin. These are um, 60 12-meter buses and uh, also uh, one 18-meter um, bus um, in operation. And um, until the end of this year, I think there will be um, <clears throat> there will be 60 more. And I think this shows that um, still the strategy here in Berlin is very clear to go fully electric uh, on the public transport sector. I also wanted to uh, present you the status quo, um, <clears throat> sorry, of EVs in general. Um, I think the development uh, went quite nicely in the last couple of months um, in terms of um, electric cars in Berlin. Uh, we are counting right now about 10,000 um, EVs in the Berlin metropolitan region. Um, most of them are in private uh, usage, but uh, we have around 2,000 also in sharing modes. And um, I think um, when you when you look on the figures, this is quite nicely. Of course, there's still a lot of um, you know um, uh, still. In, the goals are still higher and we want to go higher, of course, um, but we're very proud also about our ecosystem of uh, mobility as a services. You can see also here the numbers of e-scooters um, and e-kick scooters. Um, but I really, what, I, what I wanted really to highlight is that we are also very proud of our sharing 
um, providers here in Berlin, so quite a variety of lists of um, companies and also startups, uh, Berlin-based startups offering their services. Um, but the bad news also is since the outbreak of the pandemic, um, the providers of car sharing uh, have recorded the decline in sales of around 70%. So this is quite um, a shocking figure, I would say. And of course, um, all the sharing services, especially the right sharing services, um, social distancing is not really in favor of this. So we really need to uh, look out for new kind of solutions adapting uh, the business models and also um, helping out our startups because um, as you know Berlin is a very vibrant and um, innovative startup system or has one uh, with a lot of uh, opportunities and uh, com companies uh, growing around these smart mobility topics and uh, yes um, I think um, there's probably no return to the before normalcy. Um, so I would say um, there will be probably some um, suffering, but we see, or we should also see um, the, um, the uh, positive sides here. Um, so let's take this, um, I would say, shock as an opportunity as well um, to maybe rethink and remodel um, our smart mobility uh, paradigm. Um, so post-crisis um, and also right now people and goods uh, uh, still and will need to move from A to B. Um, so solutions uh, will need uh, to be more digital, resil resilient of course, and also safe. And um, looking to the customer experience, um, I think it should be more seamless and personalized uh, and of course uh, safer than ever before. And so we have to um, also, from a city perspective, uh, support these uh, companies, these startups, our ecosystems more than ever uh, to really prevent that um, we have too much, uh, I would say, uh, unnecessary uh, losses here. Um, so this also brings me to the benefit of Ethical City Moonshot. And uh, yes, we're very proud to also participate um, in this um, um, endeavor. Um, I think. I know we, we also see it from the past, there are huge benefits in um, exchange experience, learn from each other, um, create synergies. Um, and also, you know, um, since we're all facing the same uh, challenges um, around the globe in the cities, uh, we should work together. And I'm really looking forward also to participate in this um, interview series. And if um, just, I think we are a little bit over time already. If you have some questions, uh, please get in touch with me. Um, or maybe there's also some time, uh, Jakob, for one or two questions uh, right now. Thank you. Thank you very much, Martin. And thank you for, for participating in this. Uh, um, one question. Uh, we, we, uh, we see now that uh, that the, the mobility planning, there's a lot of, of uh, activities going on on the policy side. Do, you, you're mentioning some of the challenges that, that we have, that we have to look into the full potential of, of uh, smart mobility services, new services coming to market and so on. And do you see some, 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 some bigger problems in uh, one thing is the way that we can organize mobility at the moment at a lockdown and that looks to citizens like ah this is the way we want the city to look in the future and then when everybody has to go back to work and drive their kids to school and so on um, I, where, where do you see the biggest challenges in in between what we see now and what politicians are commenting on now that ah well let's try to keep it as it is now we'll with with the improved air quality and less congestion and so on, and then what the what a city like Berlin needs for to move their citizens. Um, yes, yeah, you said, uh, Jakob. I think there is a quite <clears throat> a dilemma also at the moment. I mean, uh, people are looking for a safe uh, and convenient way to travel, of course. <clears throat> now with um, the lift of the lockdown, also here in Germany. 
I think many will go back to their offices and they will think twice what kind of uh, mode of transport they will use, right? Um, I hope that many will use their bikes. I mean, we have, uh, um, yeah, the, I mean, the bike lanes are getting better in Berlin and also I hope that that leads also to more space um, for, for bike traffic compared to individual motorized traffic. Um, but in the end, I mean, um, I think still a lot of people will will um, will uh, yeah tend to to use their own private cars for the moment because it's not I mean it's a more more convenient way but um, I think we we need to focus on our public transport to create clever solutions how to make it uh, more attractive uh, to the citizens and this should be still the backbone right public transport need to be the backbone for the um, transport system in in, the, in every city. Um, and uh, we need to find solutions and this will not probably not be very easy um but i hope there will be a um you know a common um um a common goal and a common um energy to to really make this happen otherwise we just fall back in an old um you know in old times uh, where everybody just uh, uh use their own way of of transport and uh all the sharing economy, all things we have created uh, would have been for nothing. That, uh, that can't be the, the goal. Thank you very much, Martin. Can I ask the two other speakers as well to turn on their webcam? Um, I would like to apologize for running over time. Uh, and then I would like to thank you very much for a very interesting presentation. And uh, from the feedback we have received, uh, it seems that there are a lot of interest in being engaged with with the work of of the city moonshot, but also with the activities of of the two cities that we heard from. So thank you very much for your participation, and uh, thank you very much for those who who logged in. Um, we always made it almost made it on time but uh, but not really and we do unfortunately not have time for for the q and a se session are there anything you want to say uh, at the end before we find we finish no yeah alexander you are muted there we go i would like to say thank you to martin and uh, to marshall for being part of this uh, development team and uh, for making the city moonshot really representative for cities because your um, input was brilliant and thank you to you Jakob for the great moderation and to everyone who joined today and I hope we will hear from uh, all of you uh, becoming part of the city moonshot. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you Jakob. Thank you Alexandra. Thank you. Bye. Bye.